Sometimes I wonder, why was the internet created? Was it made to collaborate on important projects across the globe? Was it made to bring different cultures together? Was it made to share spicy VTuber fan art? Or was it made to share incredibly cursed projects that should have never been created? Whatever the reason, today we're taking advantage of the fourth one. CSS Only Chat. A truly monstrous async web chat using no JavaScript whatsoever on the front end. This is a really, really bad idea. But it does technically work. This isn't cheating with HTML forms and then saving data on the server. No, no, no. This is sending data to the server with CSS and receiving data with CSS and not reloading the page. That sounds really stupid. And that's because it is. And the developer would agree with me. So. With a chat application, there are two main things you need to do. Send data and receive data. Now, doing this is relatively simple. So, how do we send data? Well, CSS is really limited in what it can do. For anyone who hasn't done CSS, active in the context of a button means when that button is pressed. In this case, it is going to change the background image of the button to the image at this URL. But what's cool is that a browser won't actually load that image until this selector is used. That is, when the button is pressed. So now we have a way to trigger a request to a server of our choice on a button press. That sounds like sending data. Now, that is not the intended purpose of this functionality, but it does do the job. In this case, it's trying to load an image stored locally on the server. But what if instead of loading a real image, you change this to something like A, or B, or C, or any other letter in the alphabet? Now you have a way to send the letter you press on the button to the server when you press the button. The problem is it only works once per button press, since a browser won't try to load that same image twice. But it's a start. The much bigger problem is how in the world do you receive data? Obviously, reloading the page and having a database and then loading stuff from the database, that's pretty easy. If you're using JavaScript, you have a WebSocket, also pretty easy. In that case, you can do all of this without reloading the page. This is how things like Google Maps work, for example. But how are you supposed to do this with just CSS? Well, you abuse a really bad design decision of the web. Back before WebSockets were widely supported, we had to use clever hacks if we wanted to push data from a server to a client in an ongoing basis. One such hack was to just make the page never finish loading. It turns out that you can tell the browser to start rendering a page before it's finished using the transfer encoding chunked HTTP header. This header right here, which uh, it specifically notes HTTP2 provides its own more efficient mechanisms for data streaming than chunked transfer and forbids the use of this header. This is not something that should be used at all. <laughs> I don't use this. This is a bad idea, but it does exist. So back to this. And when you do that, you don't actually have to stop loading the page. You can just keep adding stuff to the bottom of the HTML forever at whatever rate you want. This is a really, really bad idea and is an absolute nightmare to scale. For anyone who doesn't understand what's going on here, this is a website that maintains an open connection with the server. This is not how websites are supposed to work. You open the connection, send the data, close the connection, reopen the connection when you want to send more data, and keep going through that. Maintaining an open connection is a nightmare to scale. With three, four, five people, it's reasonable. But the reason why services like Google Maps can exist, or you have a service like Twitter, where if you get a DM, it automatically shows the DM and you don't have to reload the page. 
All of that is thanks to things that are much, much better than a solution like this. Anyway, this terrible idea is what we're doing, so let's get back to it. So for example, you could start sending a normal HTML page and then just stop sending HTML while still telling the client that you're sending it until you're ready to deliver another message. Now this doesn't let you modify existing HTML, but it does let you append. What can we do with that? How about when you load the index page, this happens. First, we load up the first pile of HTML we want to show, a welcome message, etc. We stop loading HTML for a while until we want to send some sort of update. Now we load a style element that display nuns all of the previous HTML. Then we load up whatever new HTML we want to show. And finally, we wait until the next update we want to send and go back to step three. Now we load up a style element that display none, all the previous HTML. Then we load up the new HTML and go back and keep looping through that. But what HTML are you supposed to be hiding? Well, you're going to be hiding the keyboard because we need to deal with those single use buttons. So let's just make new buttons. But how is that supposed to work? If you make a new A button and it still has the same A URL, isn't that button already technically clicked? And it's not gonna to try to send the data again. Correct. So let's change the URL. Thankfully, our method of receiving data fixes that for us. Here's what happens. We show an A button whose background image is something like image slash A or A directly or whatever path you wanna use. The A is the important part that we care about. When you press it, the server receives the image request for A. The server then pushes an update to the client to hide the current button and replace it with one whose background image is A, A. Now what's being said here is all of the previous buttons being pressed. So if you press H, E, L, and then you wanna press the A button, the URL of the A button is no longer A. Instead, it's all of the previous letters prepended onto the button URL. Every button is gonna have the full message inside of it. Then when you're done and press the submit button, it'll tell the server to print that message onto the screen. Once again, this can be done by having the entire message in the submit button URL, and then some sort of indicator on the end to differentiate it from the regular buttons, something like dash sub or dash submit or something like that. And then none of this would be possible without the magic on the server side, parsing out the image paths from the buttons, sending data back to the client, updating the buttons, generating the HTML to show the messages on the screen, and any other little things you need to be doing. But all of this stuff with sending the data to the server and receiving the data from the server, that is done with no JavaScript whatsoever. Now in the example here, there are two different users. The way we differentiate them is also in the button, a bit of extra information is encoded, that being the client ID. Now besides this being just a bad idea, what could go wrong with this? Broken by browser BG image handling changes, long request timeouts, running out of threads, that's a pretty easy one. Fast clicking bugs, generic concurrency headaches, poor handling by proxies, it's inaccessible, etc, etc. Basically, it's a bad idea. But should I use it in real life? Dear God, yes. Now that's obviously sarcasm, please don't actually try to deploy this. Now these inspirations are kind of a joke. The actual inspiration is this tweet thread. It occurred to me that you can remotely monitor the cursed location without JavaScript by using some CSS hover selectors to change hidden background images causing a get request. This should work on Tor as well and could be an interesting approach to tracking visitors. Neither of these windows use JavaScript but the position of the cursor in the left window is sent to the right window. This works on the Tor browser with JavaScript disabled. Here they link to the server code they were using and there's nothing being shown here for some reason. The browser won't reload the background image, so this version only tracks the movement on the first hover. But since the request is chunked, the server can send more CSS to add new hover selectors each time one triggers. Aside from making me question everything I know about browser tracking capabilities, this also makes me think that you could build some highly interactive content without using JavaScript at all. Or you could make a horribly inefficient web chat for the memes.
That sounds a lot more fun to me. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you know this was possible? Have you messed around with something like this yourself? Maybe you're doing web development back when this was a thing that people normally did. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, still be pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And please don't actually do this. Thanks,